right? The biggest issue only working with loan signing agents. All right, excellent. So now I know what the direction that y'all would like some of the answers. All right, so for those of you who are new, I'm gonna go over the five critical documents. Um, if you can give me a chance, in the chat, please name some of the critical documents you think they were gonna go over. Um, do you think that, um, let's see, a power of attorney is a critical document? Do you think a AKA, a signature affidavit is a critical document? Do you think that a, a occupancy is a critical document? Put the critical documents in the chat right now for me to make sure that you understand where we're going. So I say all of that to say, um, typically when I call a borrower, I make sure I follow up with a text message. So I have a simple text verbiage that I have in my phone, just in case that they're not able to uh, answer my phone. And they usually appreciate that because nine times out of 10, they are literally, they are literally at work, right? Working professionals. So I'll follow up with a message saying, hi, my name is Renee and I am your loan signing agent. I am not a notary public and uh, I'm sorry, I am a loan signing agent and I am assigned to your case. And I just wanna let you know that um, we are scheduled to be there at 6.30 PM on April the 1st, 2022. Uh, I just wanna let you know that it may take about 45 minutes to an hour. So I would like for you know the area to be signed at a table if that's something that you have to accommodate. We will sign in whatever color ink that is a part. Usually blue is, I would say king. And if the confirmation says black, use otherwise. Certain states require a certain color, right? For the universal color, I would say blue. Just in Miss Renee opinion, uh, in my experience. And then lastly, I will make sure that I confirm the address. There has been a lot of times that I did not confirm the address. And I actually went to their office instead of their resident, or I went to their resident instead of their address, and there was some type of mix up. So one of the things is to make sure that you confirm the address before you get off that phone. Uh, lastly, I let them know that if they have any question or concern, feel free that I am reachable and I'm textable. They really tend to like that. I see the chat is actually blowing up. So that's great And when it comes to critical documents. So we just talked about the script of what to say. Make sure you have your address, make sure it's the correct address. And sometimes if you have the loan documents, I would actually go over what is the vesting amount, right? So I will go over the vesting amount when it comes to uh, them particular, because when it comes to the vesting, you don't wanna make sure that the signing is gonna be closed because of the fact that you forgot to go over the vesting, right? So I say all of that to say, it's very important for you to go over the vesting, okay? So let's make sure that we make sure that we go over the vesting if we have the documents in time, okay? Just in time. Some people may not actually have that. So I say all of that to say, this is some of the things that you wanna go over. So now that the chat is actually uh, set for us, let's see what you have. We have the note, ding, that is correct. The AKA, I see that some people like uh, put the AKA. The AKA is called the signature, Affidavit, that is not considered a critical document in the thing. The settlement statement, the alter statement is, I would not call the critical document. Over that, I would call the CD as a critical document, okay? Um, let's keep going. We're able to see that. I kind of showed you that on my Calendly um, opt-in form, but definitely it's not something that you need right now it's something that you may aspire to get eventually okay uh business cards and brochures i showed you how important it is for you to get business cards and brochures Okay, so with the uh, brochures, I recommend that you do the brochures more than the business cards because it stands out more, right? Um, okay, and we also went over payment gateways. You have to have some type of payment gateway set up. 
I have PayPal, I have Square, what would also be like Cash App, uh, because I have a lot of notaries that I can pay through Cash App. I don't have QuickBooks, but I know a lot of notaries that do use QuickBooks. Um, and then I have uh, Stripe as well. So here's a here's the cool thing about that. Sometimes, like, let's just say they try to book an appointment with your Calendly. Um, don't ever let that sale go. Be sure that you, you get that person back on the phone and if they tell you, hey, I'm having some problems uh, processing my order to book an appointment, you can say, you know what, no, no problem. I can take your order over the phone. Believe it or not, customers pay over the phone. I get a lot of customers that pay over the phone. Uh, just discard all of that valuable information that you have, like their credit card number, expiration date, security code. Make sure you discard all of that. It, it's not lying around for somebody prying eyes to see, right? So I do that once I get the information and then I'll put I'll input it myself through PayPal or you know whatever other payment gateway I have. So <clears throat> be sure to keep that in mind. Never let the sale go. It, you do have other options if for some reason there's a technical glitch somewhere take the credit card over the phone and then you can always and spell it right if they say you can't cross it out and spell it guess what a redraw is going to have to happen and now it's not guaranteed that you're going to get all the money that you was promised because you didn't conclude the signing so certain steps to make you a great notary the purpose is to make you a great notary so i'm coming on here with my coach to tell you some of the things that through my journey i wish somebody would have told me that was it all right so let's keep going all right now there's a little initial pay attention to that initial because baby let me tell you let me tell you these initials were a demon to me okay yeah i'm speaking spiritual but it was a demon to me because i sometimes overlooked it overlooked it and i had to go back and going back and not getting paid to go back is not good so i wish that you better than me okay and i'm coming up in here because i don't want you to miss some of the mistakes that i missed as a notary yeah i was able to scale my business very very fastly when i was a notary my first month i made 2.5 my next month i made six get thousand why because i actually saw a girl that looked like me on youtube and told me her first 30 days she made six thousand and i said wow she told me all the recipe and I just scale my business. And I'll share, I'll share that YouTube video with you guys. And if you know me, you already know I already shared it with you. So that was some of the secrets that she told me, just like the secrets that I'm telling you. And then my third month, I made 6,000. My fourth month, I made 7,000. My fifth month, I made 8,000, almost nine. And then I said, hmm, I need a coach. I said, there's too many orders out here too many orders out here and i'm not getting all of them so i scaled my business to a signing service and i got my coaching from mr toledo when i did that he was able to show me how to scale my business and still work in the company until i was actually ready to actually launch to the public right so i brought one person in and i would call it a little bitty signing service right at the time right I brought some people in that I coach to kind of take order.
little business cards that are pinned up on a board. Somebody's going to go pull your phone number off your brochure first because it's bigger, it's larger, and it pushes everybody else to the side. That makes sense? So that is valuable right there. Assistant living, same thing applies. Hospice, same thing applies. Hospitals, uh, again, you'll have the security guard at the front or you'll have the receptionist up front. Um, and then you may have to talk to a social worker uh, to do that. Now, the trick is with nursing homes, hospitals, hospice, assistant living facilities like that, they do not have a notary on staff. The reason is they don't want to be Due to medical and financial power of attorney, they're usually getting a transfer of death instrument, which is also called a TODI, or um, most likely they're going to get a last will and testament or a trust package. If they don't mention that to you, I highly suggest that you suggest it to them. Be like, are you guys getting a last will and trust in place as well? You know, just, just casually mention it, mention it, right? Um, because it will put you in a position not only to plant the seed for them to take care of their fine family affairs, but it also positions you to get another assignment through that family. So as you can see, a lot of this stuff with power of attorney is very family oriented. And this is what they see. Simple, clean, no big deal. Hey, you want to save money on your next traveling notary service? Go ahead and, and, and get this free coupon that we have. Now, this is just a mock-up. I see the little error. It says the 20% off. We changed it to 10. But you can add images. You can add videos. You can add all kind of different things on there where you can entice the customers to want to give you information. Remember, social media, the reason why, the first thing that they ask you before you can create an account is your email. That is the very first thing that they ask you before you can create an account because they know they can remarket to you. They can remarket. gem it is a gem and i i didn't realize so many people would want to sign up for just to say ten dollars they're like man maybe i should have increased the the amount of money that they're saved no ten dollars is working perfectly so yeah this is the email that they get and then what they'll do is a lot of times um, they'll just call the number on here or I reach out to them and call me like, hey, we just got your um, your online inquiry. How can I help you today? And then I go into the call script. And, it's, and then when I get down to the price, I'll let them know that, hey, you also get that $10 coupon code off. So I'm going to apply your coupon code USNA1137. And your price just went from $178 to $168. And then I hush. I don't say a word. But I believe from, from the research that I've been doing, a voucher is going to be really, really powerful, more than the coupon code. Because people like vouchers, people like credit, right? Things to get credited to their account. Um, so I created with my, my notary agency logo right here. It's going to say like $30 off. Of course, I can always mark my prices up and then drop it down. That's why you always want to have high prices. If your price is too low, you can't offer discounts. And, and then if you can't offer a discount, your 
customers better excellent so you don't have to worry about that all right let's keep going we have one of the fourth critical documents go ahead and put four in the chat okay four in the chat four in the chat all right i see a lot of fours going all right now it's called the deed of trust deed of trust this is one of the important ones and they'll give you a notary hack says no one ever pay attention to the second page. The second page is very important, okay? And so as section B. Section B is so important when it comes to the deed of trust, okay? Why is it a deed and why is it a mortgage? Well, what I was told by Carol Ray, and she was one of the best in the industry, okay? When it comes to teaching loan documents, okay? What what Carol Ray told to me was no, that no, no. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what Carol Ray said to me was that the difference between the mortgage deed and the deed of trust is all about who is listed as number D, where the property is and what the rules are when it comes to foreclosure much that we need to know as a notary but it's good information to know in section d these are the people that needs to be notified if your property is in foreclosure so why is it a deed or a mortgage well in counties in florida it's a different type of rule so they give they plan a different type of game okay so in florida properties you're going to see d because they have to notify the sheriff in order for foreclosure to happen. They can't just notify the trustees of the actual mortgage. So they have to go one more step. So when they notify the sheriff for foreclosure, the sheriff has to be involved. They just can't foreclosure on the house, right? So that's one of the real reasons why it says mortgage versus says deed of trust. Hope that was a notary hat. If you think that that was great, put notary hat in the chat. Go ahead and put notary hack in the chat for, I'm pretty sure a lot of notaries didn't know that. You just saw, oh, well, it, it says mortgage, but I don't really know why. So that's one of the important things that I hope that you got that. All right, so now let's focus on number B. B is the best thing. As a notary, just like the RTC is important, it's our job as a notary, at least Miss Renee would say, is that you go over section B. Section B is so important. Why? Because that can really make you only get a portion of your fee if you don't pay attention. So that's why I say if you get the documents early, it's an extra thing for you to do, but it may be important for you to identify, does this name match the confirmation? Meaning is the confirmation sheet that you receive is correct and is the D matching it. Let's do our proof me mechanism. If not, you know, drive 20 minutes away, drive 30 minutes away, drive an hour away, you know, sit there and you're going to go over this. And if it's not part of your five critical documents that come to the front of the, the loan document, you know, sit there and, you know, realize that the D her name is Miss Misspell, or his name is misspelled. 
And if that's the case, you better pray, pray, pray to make sure that title or the signing service approve for you to cross it out. Not necessarily you, but the borrower. Cross it out and spell it right. If they say you can't cross it out and spell it right, guess what? A redraw is going to have to happen. And now it's not guaranteed that you're going to get all the money that you was promised because you didn't conclude the signing. So certain steps to make you a great notary. The purpose is to make you a great notary. So I'm coming on here with my coach to tell you some of the things that during my journey, I wish somebody would have told me. That was it. All right. So let's keep going. All right. Now there's a little initial. Pay attention to that initial because, baby, let me tell you, let me tell you. These initials were a demon to me, okay? Yeah, I'm speaking spiritual. But it was a demon to me because I sometimes overlooked it, overlooked it, and I had to go back. And going back and not getting paid to go back is not good. So I wish that you better than me, okay? And I'm coming up in here because I don't want you to miss some of the mistakes that I miss as a notary. Yeah, I was able to scale my business very, very fastly. When I was a notary, my first month, I made 2.5. My next month, I made 6,000. Why? Because I actually saw a girl that looked like me on YouTube and told me her first 30 days, she made 6,000. And I said, wow. She told me all the recipe and I just scaled my business. And I'll share, I'll share that YouTube video with you guys. And if you know me, you already know I already shared it with you. So that was some of the secrets that she told me, just like the secrets that I'm telling you. And then my third month, I made 6,000. My fourth month, I made 7,000. My fifth month, I made 8,000, almost nine. And then I said, hmm, I need a coach. I said, there's too many orders out here. Too many orders out here. And I'm not getting all of them. So I scaled my business to a signing service. And I got my coaching from Mr. Toledo. When I did that, he was able to show me how to scale my business and still work in the company until I was actually ready to actually launch to the public, right? So I brought one person in and I would call it a little bitty signing service, right? At the time, right? I brought some people in that I coached to kind of take orders from me that was locally and then locally becomes regional and regional becomes nationwide. Someone told me, hey, do you have signings in Alaska? I said, okay. And then I realized Alaska terrain is very hard. So I stay out of Alaska. So if you're ever thinking about being a signing service and you want to be nationwide, don't go to Alaska because that terrain notary is telling me if you fly me up the mountain, what you mean? And I'm in the military too. So you would think I know terrain, but man, those maps are a little bit hard, but I do go to Hawaii. So with that being said, we do offer signings in Hawaii. But let's get back to this, okay? So we're on page two, you guys, page two. If y'all like what I'm saying, if you really like what I'm saying, please show me some love in the chat. Put some hearts, put some hearts in the chat um, and show me some love because that's how more excited I get and more hacks that I drop. If y'all dry, I won't put no hacks, no more hacks. So show me some love, okay? All right, excellent. So now, second half. This right here, how many people pay attention to the second page? Or you just fly through the 14 pages of the deed of trust or the mortgage, and you really don't pay attention to the second page? Well, the second page is important, you guys, because it's going to tell you if you have any writers. If the second page checks something, that means it's important in the writers. Who taught me this? My mentor and Kira Ray. So I'm telling you, Tara Ray was the GOAT, okay, to loan signing. And guess what? Laura, she's Judge Judy when it comes to notarization. All right. So if you don't know who those two people is, I promise you, you should learn from the best. All right. All right. So now if you have writers here, what that means is, guess what? That you're going to have the next form after the packet. So let me ask you, does anybody know what a plan development writer is? What is 
the purpose of a plan development writer? That means that they have HOAs, right? So you wanna make sure when you come across a plan development writer that the name of the HOA community is correct. Little things like this can make you a great notary. This can make you go direct. This will make you say, 